Welcome back to The Grind. In this video, we're going to talk about the current event, which is Team Gauntlet, and a couple of the updates that have been released with this week's Team Gauntlet release. Previously, the health or hit points of the PvP islands was increased for Platinum, Sapphire, and Diamond Leagues. The Platinum League went up by 50%, while the Sapphire and Diamond Leagues PvP Island HP went up by 100%. With this version of uh, Team Gauntlet, the health or hit points of the PvP Island for Sapphire and Diamond League was reduced so that it was equal to a 50% increase rather than a 100% increase. So all of the leagues with Platinum, Sapphire, and Diamond from the original health went up by 50%, and the HP of those islands in the Sapphire and Diamonds leagues were already higher than that of the lower leagues as it was. So that original 100% increase was very significant and increased the burden uh, a lot. Now, hopefully teams will enjoy the PvP islands a little bit more, allowing more teammates to get the ideal optimum points from the PvP islands without increasing the cost or burden as significantly as the original 100% did. The other great change that came previously, which is still the same in this event, is that the PvE islands refresh a lot quicker now. The time I think was three hours and now it's two hours. So it allows for a lot more points from these better PVP or PVE islands rather than forcing teams, especially at the end of the event when they need to scrape together some remaining points to be forced to clear out all these lower level islands that give much less points. So now if you're new to War Dragons or want a uh, brief reminder of how the event works, I will briefly summarize it here, but for an in-detail analysis, check out my event playlist for an analysis of how to optimize this event for personal and team points. So basically, you start off with only the first island unlocked. You have to defeat it in order to unlock the next, and so on all the way around until you get to this final island. Now, whether or not you unlock all the islands, the PvP island will come up every three hours, and the important the important thing to take note of is the amount of points you score from the PvP island is determined by which PvE island you've unlocked at the highest point. So ideally, your team will unlock all of the islands before you have the first or second PvP island drop, because then you can maximize the points you score from that PvP island. And in the other video, I go through the details of why that is more important, because um, I think I use this example, getting to this death island here and then skipping the PvP island was better to allow more progression if you just continue to unlock the PvE islands, because the amount of points that you get on the second PvP island for investing all those point or all those attacks into continuing on the PvE islands ends up getting you more points in return in the end. So definitely it is very valuable to work on the PvE islands first because the first or second PvP no team really has that many points and the major benefit of the PvP island at least racing into the PvP island is that you steal points from the opponent if you beat them first. And nobody has many points to steal, and it's a percentage, so really it is okay to sacrifice the first one or two PvP islands um, in order to get a little bit more progress on these other islands. Now, basically, the PvP islands are pretty simple to beat. You just go in and do your attack, and obviously it's ideal to do um, not mega attacks because you don't get as many points from those islands in general. Plus, you want to maximize the amount of points that or attacks that you can do on those islands because they um, are limited, so to speak. However, if you are in a rush to unlock all the islands before the PvP island, then 
I mean, some teams will probably do mega attacks to clear those quickly if they have, you know, mega attacks to spare. But as far as optimizing the points that you and your team can get, running basic attacks or super attacks is the best option, especially on the lower islands because they really don't give you a lot of points. You'd be sacrificing a lot more by doing mega attacks on those ones. The other thing to consider, especially for the free to play and lower level players, is that the more basic attacks you do, the more flames you'll get overall, which means the more wildfire runs that you can get, which is a solid chunk of points for players who don't have the ability to spend a lot of resources like inner fires and energy packs. So we're going to do this one last run, which is an inner fire run, and then we'll probably finish up the video. The PvP island is coming soon, so I'm going to work with my team to make sure we can take that down in a timely manner, hopefully before the other team does. But again, early on in the event, the being first doesn't have as significant as an impact because you only steal a percent of points, and the percent that you would steal from the very first or second pvp is going to be a very very minor amount compared to on day two three and four when everybody has so many more points to steal so that is something to keep in mind talk with your team about what your team strategy is this event requires a lot of teamwork because everybody needs to share points unfortunately but with the recent changes uh, the amount of points that are available throughout an entire event has increased which does decrease the burden of you know making it less challenging for everyone to get the points that they would like to get so i hope this video was helpful good luck with this pvp event and i'll see you in the next video